We are in the month of Av. This is a month that is a low point for many of the Jewish people in their heritage. On the ninth of Av, uh, both temples were destroyed. Uh, and also it was on the ninth of Av that the spies came back from the Canaan, the promised land. And uh, you know the story, there were 12 spies, 10 came back with a very, very bad report, and two came back, Caleb and Joshua, was a very good report, saying that they could go into the land and they could conquer it. And unfortunately, it was, it, it was because of the 10 spies' bad report they began to speak doubt and unbelief and the people began to believe what they were saying and they did not believe that the Lord would give them the land. And this is why it is so tragic that even in our life today, many things um, are prohibited to us because we don't believe. Uh, we do not have an overcoming spirit. And, uh, you know, the God we serve is a very, very big God. And it's to our tragedy and, and to our great uh, disappointment that w we don't walk in and believe God for the things that God has for us. Things that have been written in our scroll. These are great things and great accomplishments that the Lord will bring to pass in your life if you believe and have faith that he will do that very thing. So. As we enter into this month, we are comforted, though, because the 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 meaning of of is father. And we know that we have a father, God, who is the father of all comfort. So uh, after devastation or after destruction, what follows in the Lord is is comfort he will comfort you and he will certainly tear things down in order to build things back up or to restore things so after the ninth of Av, the the frequency of the month changes it becomes lighter so this is a month that we need to be very careful about what we hear so remember that the uh, the 12 spots 10 of them came back with a bad report and the people heard a bad report. You have to watch what your ears listen to. Uh, if you listen to bad reports or you listen to a lot of negativity or if you have friends that are always complaining, you watch a lot of news and it's all dark, you are definitely affected and your faith level is affected. You know, faith comes by the hearing of the word and, and we need to hear the word of God and the word of God is life. We need to position ourselves to always believe and to hear a what a good word. If we don't do that, our faith can be negatively affected, just like the people of Israel. The Lord wanted them to go immediately into their promised land, but because they did not, they were basically cursed to have to uh, go around in circles, if you would, in the wilderness for 40 long years. Careful what you hear this month and position yourself to hear from the Lord. Now, the month of Av, the tribe that represents this month is Simeon. And we know Simeon was uh, the son of Jacob and Leah. And when Leah had Simeon, she named him Simeon for a reason, because it actually means to hear. Looking at Genesis 29, 33, she conceived again and she bore a son and said, because the Lord has 
heard that I'm hated, he has given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. So that Hebrew word Simeon is likened to hearing. Uh, the hearing from the Lord or hearing from people. And she says that the Lord heard that she was hated. Now I can imagine that during Leah's pregnancy, there was a lot of heartache in Leah, a lot of rejection because she really did believe that she was hated because Jacob loved Rachel. And it was a true fact that Jacob did love Rachel more than her. And I want you to know that if you are pregnant and you are going through a lot of emotional upheaval and you are dealing with a lot of negativity and you're listening to a lot of negative things and there's inner conflict in you, it can affect your child even in the womb. This is the power, the sensitivity of the human spirit. Now, the reason why I bring this up is that Simeon had difficulty hearing from the Lord. As a matter of fact, he did not hear from God. He opened himself to the works of the enemy. He was a very violent person. Uh, and in Genesis, we read that he actually, along with his brother Levi, went into the city of Shechem and took revenge because Simeon and Levi believed that their sister Dinah had been violated by the prince of Shechem. They exacted revenge upon the whole city and actually uh, killed many, many people and took their oxen and hamstrung their oxen. You know, innocent animals, obviously, uh, and crippled them. It was ruthless activity. Uh, we see, too, that Simeon in Genesis 49, verse 7, uh, he was cursed because of his anger. It says, Cursed be their anger, for it is fierce. He's, uh, Jacob is speaking about uh, Simeon and Levi. You know, sometimes when you have a partner in crime, uh, it's it's a power there, it, but it's it's an evil power when you combine yourself with another person. And so this is why he says, curse it be their anger, for it is fierce and their wrath, for it is cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. So we know that Simeon had difficulty hearing from God um, and obeying the will of God because he had a lot of anger in his heart. Now, this may have had something to do with him being in the womb of his mom. Uh, maybe he picked up her feelings of, of the hatred she felt like people had toward her. I don't know, but I do think it's interesting to ponder that. And so this child grew up with a violent nature and a very angry nature, so much so that his father Jacob could not fully bless him. Uh, Simeon uh, was, the, was the tribe that was the, the least of all the tribes of Israel. And they didn't really have a full inheritance at all. They had to share their inheritance with a much greater tribe, that being of Judah. They were scattered throughout Israel. So you can see this had um, a definite effect on the lineage of Simeon. It's so true that everything that we plant, uh, every seed that we plant, we will reap. We reap what we sow. And unfortunately, because Simeon didn't have correct hearing, uh, he planted seeds of violence. And because of that, his tribe in years to come would be the weakest of all the tribes. Now, I mentioned this because we need to position ourselves this month, in particular to hear from the Lord. There are strategies that the Lord wants to give you this month that are going to affect you later on. Now, remember, um, Simeon did things that were wrong, and he, he thought he was right because he was going to take revenge for his sister's violation. Uh, but he didn't realize that what he did by murdering all these people in this city of Shechem, that it would have a far-reaching effect. 
So in this very month, you need to really position yourself to hear from the Lord to get strategies and downloads uh, and then to obey them or put things in proper order, uh, set things in order this month from what you're hearing from the Lord. Many times the Lord will tell you something so that you can prepare or that you can do certain things that will later bear fruit in the coming year. But if you have an anger problem, if you're angry toward relationships, you have a lot of uh, unforgiveness in your heart, you have all these grievances against people, you're angry with people that you're in very close relationship with, it is going to affect your hearing. Uh, We have to be very careful about our anger because when we move in anger and we don't immediately repent of it, will stew on it in our thought life and it will cut us off from hearing from the Lord. It's not that the Lord is uh, not speaking. He is speaking. Uh, he, he, it's not a transmission problem. It's a reception problem. So we have to look at our own heart and keep our heart clean and really learn how to live Uh, in confession and bringing things when we get off unto the Lord so that we don't walk in condemnation, but we walk in the Holy Spirit. And anger is something that opens the door to the demonic. And once that door is open, you're cut off from hearing God and you will do things and act in ways that are quite violent, that will not bode well for you and will not bode well for your future. James 1 19, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. So again, the apostle is talking to uh, born again people. You must all be quick to listen. So we have to have a hunger to want to listen to God. We, we, we need to be very alive, very conscious to hearing from the Lord. And that would mean you have to learn how to listen to the Lord. The Lord is transmitting, but sometimes we're not listening. So again, we see this exhortation to be quick to listen and slow to speak. Sometimes when we're speaking, what happens too much talking, even in prayer, vain repetition, you're talking, talking, talking to God. You're just talking about the problem and then you're reworking the problem and you're focused only on the negative. We we need to be slow to speak and have actually very few words where we need to focus is on being quiet and listening to the Lord. And then apostle says, and slow to anger, because if we're not slow to anger, if we are in anger, that is going to block us from hearing from the Lord. Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. Righteousness is the way the Lord does things. So you're, you want to listen this month to hear the righteous way to move, um, the way that is going to bring you blessing, because that's what the Lord wants to do. He, he desires to bless you, but you can't hear what he's saying if you have anger in your heart. So you have to deal with that. Proverbs 9 verse 9 says, give instructions to a wise man, give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. That's a hallmark of somebody who's very wise. They listen and they listen to instruction. They don't think that they're all that, and yet they're very wise. Wise people open their ear to instruction that will help them give instruction to a wise man and he will be yet wiser teach a righteous man one upright and in right standing with God and he will increase in learning some people are blocked from hearing God because they they're puffed up they're puffed up in their knowledge they think that they're right they're very invested in their own opinions They don't even give people the time of day to instruct them because they've already got their minds made up. You can't think that you're moving the right way. And you may be moving the wrong way. But if you're a wise person, if somebody comes to you and gives you an instruction, uh, 
and it opposes the way you're going, you will be open to hearing that. And many times the Lord will bring correction to you through the instruction of other people. And certainly through the instruction of the word. That's why it's so very important to sit and soak under the word of God in the house of the Lord. Though the, the Lord God Almighty uses his word. It is inspired by the Holy Spirit and it will give you wisdom. But you have to want the word and hunger after the word. That That is very important. Um, you know, Jesus said, that man doesn't hunger only after bread, but for uh, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's what we should be hungering after. Most people are so fleshly minded. All they really think about is what they're going to eat. Uh, they're hungry for, for food, but they're not hungry for every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And so... When you repent and you shift up and you start seeing the value of listening to the Lord and getting instructions from the Lord, you'll be hungry to hear from God. And that's a good thing. People don't hear from God, not because they can't hear from God, because any born again believer can hear from the Lord. Absolutely. But a born again believer that's not hungry to hear the Lord or to listen to the Lord will not hear from the Lord because they don't have a desire to hear from God. And that is on us. And that has to change in your life. Proverbs 24, 6, for by wise counsel, you can wage your war. So we're all in some type of warfare, right? There's something that you're praying about that you're standing in the gap for. You're standing on the word for. And, and so it's very important that we always open ourselves to wise counsel, whether that is through that one on one Holy Spirit connection that you have uh, or whether it's through reading the word or whether it's sitting and hearing a message. You open yourself to the Holy Spirit and you say, Lord, I want wise counsel. Teach me, Lord. Counsel me. And Jesus said that the Holy Spirit, who he would send, the Father would send, would be a counselor to us. And we have an inward counselor, the Holy Spirit. It says, for by wise counsel, you can wage your war, and in an abundance of counselors, there is victory and safety. I love this because anytime you're in leadership, you need counselors and, and you need people that is in your inner circle that um, has the vision that you, you have and they can look and they are praying with you and interceding. And so they're there to help you. You can talk about a situation. You can all seek the Lord together. And through the wisdom of many counselor, the scripture says is victory and safety. But if you don't position yourself to hear, uh, if you think that you know it all and you're puffed up with pride, you're not open to have any counselors around the table help you. So again, this is a month to connect with people who are very wise and open your ear to them Listen to them because the Lord has a word for you. Uh, and of course, the Lord in prayer, as you speak less and listen more and you don't have any unforgiveness in your heart, you don't have anger in your heart, rage in your heart. You are the open to hear from the Lord. Now, I know the Lord speaks to all believers. Uh, so if a believer says to you, well, I can't hear from the Lord. That believer is deceived because in John 10, 27, we read my sheep hear my voice. Jesus said that my sheep. So unequivocally, we see right there that his sheep, his believers hear his voice. And I know them and they follow me. So don't ever say you can't hear from the Lord if you're a believer, because Jesus said my sheep hear my voice now you may not have a desire to hear his voice uh because maybe you don't want to hear what he's got to say or you may not want to hear what his people have to say but you can hear his voice and it's so important this month 
that we seek the Lord, we seek his voice for wise counsel. Proverbs twelve fifteen. A stubborn fool considers his own way the right one. But a person who listens to advice is wise. Here again, that underscores what I'm talking about. You don't want to have a hard heart, a heart of unbelief. You don't want to be a stubborn fool. The Lord considers you a stubborn fool if you think your way is only the right way. You always have to be open to what other people who walk with the Lord uh, have to say. Uh, the counsel of the godly is so very important. So you need the body of Christ. You don't need to be a lone ranger. Um, you, you need to connect. You may think you know it all, but you don't know it all. And, and I'm sure, you know, the Lord does speak to you, but the Lord will speak to you one on one. But he, he won't always speak to you one on one. Many times he speaks to you through his body. And so we have to humble ourselves to listen to advice. That is a very wise person. Luke 10, 38. This is a very uh, classic scripture passage. I'm sure you've heard this. Uh, this is about Mary and Martha. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. So we see Martha. She loves Jesus. She invites him into her home. She's glad to have him there. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. So immediately we see a difference. Although Martha welcomed Jesus into her home, she didn't sit at his feet and listen. So there are two kinds of believers. There's a believer that will welcome the Lord into their heart. They will receive the Lord. They'll um, believe, you know, that the Lord died for them on the cross of Calvary, sh shed his precious blood for them and know that their sins have been forgiven them. They may welcome the Lord into their life, but they may not take time to sit at his feet to what? To listen. Mary had a heart to listen to the Lord, but Martha did not. Because in verse 40, we read, but Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? So here we've got Martha. All she's thinking about is serving, serving, serving. She's, a, she's doing a lot of busy work. She wants to make everything right. But the, the scripture actually says that distracted her from the most important thing and that was sitting at the feet of jesus we need to learn how to work smarter and not harder many times we're working harder because we haven't taken time to sit at the feet of jesus and hear what the lord has to say about the things that we're working at the lord desires for us to labor into his rest and he has a way of executing his will through us and he also said that his yoke was easy and his burden was light. And the reason why our yoke isn't easy, it's not, the, it's not the yoke of Christ. And it's not the yoke of Christ. And our burden is so heavy. It's not the burden of Christ because we're not sitting at the feet of Jesus to listen to what he has to tell us. And so this is the way Jesus answered Martha. He said, but the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha. And every time the scripture uses a name twice, that means there's great affection uh, in, in, in using that uh, name twice. Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. This is one major block. Anger is a major block. Unforg unforgiveness is a major block. But honestly, anxiety and being troubled in your heart will block you from hearing the Lord. And you'll get distracted just like Martha was. Uh, but one thing is necessary. Now, Jesus was very clear about this. This is the one thing necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. This is the good portion. This is our portion, um, the portion of the Lord. We sit at his feet. We, we block off all distractions. We quiet our souls. Amen. We quiet ourselves so we can hear from the Lord. Looking at Psalms 107, 29, this is a powerful passage. He stilled the storm to a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed. 
they were glad when it grew calm and he guided them to their desired haven. Now look at that. That's it, figuratively, we can look at that. There's a storm on the inside of you many times when you have a problem or when you're upset about something or you don't know which way to go. It's almost like your emotions are like the waves of the sea and you're very troubled. But as we submit to the Lord, he, he's, he's going to quiet your soul down. And then you're going to be glad because you're going to grow calm and he's going to then be able to guide you to your desired haven. When you're upset, when your emotions are way up here, you're in high intensity, you're not going to hear from the Lord and he will not be able to guide you to the place you want to be because he's transmitting wisdom. But this anxiety and this emotional uh, stress that you're under will block you from hearing it. We have a reception problem. God has no transmission problem. Psalms 46.10 bears this out. He says, stop your striving and recognize that I am God. We have to stop our stri striving. We have to calm our souls, quiet our souls. We have to get quiet within so that we can hear from the Lord. How do you hear from the Lord? Don't look for an audible voice, although I know at times God has spoken to people audibly. And sometimes we are, are looking for a still, small voice, yes, in our heart. But many times the Lord's going to speak to you through your thought life. He's going to give you a thought. It's going to come directly from the Holy Spirit because we have the mind of Christ. And he will also give you impressions. Don't look for you know, a long discourse from the Lord, all right, or a long sermon. Hear or see the impressions or the visions he's giving you and then meditate on those impressions and those thoughts. And as you meditate on them, the Lord will illuminate to you exactly what you need to do. It's essential to hear from the Lord because any problem you have, uh, any problem, God has a solution for it, but you have to listen to him to be able to receive that solution to your problem. Let the month of Av be a month where your hearing is sharpened because your reception is expanded. Now may the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, may the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, to be gracious to you, to give you favor. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in the name of Yeshua. Amen and amen. Amen.